Hi guys, if you are new, my name is Haley. I have mitochondrial DNA disease and this week is mitochondrial disease awareness week. And today I'm going to be talking about what exactly it is, but before I get into that, I wanted to share that there will be some awesome videos coming this week. Uh, obviously this video is on Monday and then on Wednesday, I believe I chose Wednesday, there's going to be a really special video coming out and then Thursday and Friday there will be a special two-parter so I hope you guys are excited for this week and I hope you guys are excited and want to raise awareness for mitochondrial disease and I know I've already done a video of what it is in the past but since I've gained a lot of subscribers since then I thought it wouldn't hurt if I did this video again. So for those of you who do not know my story, um, I will have some videos linked in the cards above that kind of explain my diagnosis journey. I have a video of how I was diagnosed and then a video with my mom of our journey to a diagnosis, but I have had it my entire life. It's a genetic condition that I got from my mom. So my form of mitochondrial disease is maternally inherited. I'm sure as you guys all know, actually some of you might not know, and don't worry, that is totally okay that there is something called mitochondria in our cells around our body. It is known as the powerhouse of the cell. It is how we live. It is how everything, almost everything functions in our body. It accounts for 90% of all body functions and the parts of the body such as the brain, heart, muscles, and lungs require the greatest energy resources, I can't think of the correct term, but require kind of the most energy and those are some of the systems that are typically affected and I'm going to get back into <laughs> what exactly it is, um, but it is when the mitochondria in our cells around our bodies doesn't produce enough mitochondria energy to function. So if you picture a cell phone at 15%, no matter how much you charge it, no matter what you try to do, whether you try to put it in rice, try to get it fixed, no matter what you do, how long you plug it for, it stays at 15% and when you use it, it goes down even more and it will only ever go up to 15%. That's my body. My body and every mitochondrial disease patient's body is like running a household on a single battery. So I know here I seem energetic and I seem all bubbly, but guys, internally I am exhausted and fatigued and it's really it's a really hard condition to have because it is the mitochondria is responsible for so much. When it malfunctions, it affects so much of your body. Now people can have mild to severe symptoms. People can have mild to severe symptoms. Every mitochondrial disease patient is completely different and there are actually multiple and multiple forms of mitochondrial disease. There are so many. I will link a link in the description box of the list of all of them. It's a really long list but um, genetic mutations is what determines what form of mitochondrial disease you have and that's when you have a change in a gene. So it's kind of like a mistake and not everybody has gene mutations, typically only those who have conditions. Like I do, like mito patients do. So that's how we're how doctors and geneticists are typically able to find out what form it is. That's kind of how they do. And there's like I said, there's so many. I'll highlight a few. There's complex one, two, three, four, and five. You can have one or you can have several of those, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's Lay syndrome and there are so many other forms of mitochondrial disease and each one is completely completely different on how it affects somebody. Not one patient is the same ever. And for me, I actually don't fall under any of the forms of mitochondrial diseases from that list at all. A variant on one of my gene mutations that only I and my mom have in the entire world as of 2013 is unknown. So we don't know which way my body will go, which way I will where I will end up in life because a lot of times with the already discovered and known about forms of mito, there are, there's at least some estimates on what might be affected in the near future. But for me, we don't know. I'm a wild, wild card and my body has been extremely complicated. Now I'm going to kind of get more into the symptoms, but I think it's really important to highlight that mitochondrial disease is almost never alone. What I mean by that is that mitochondrial disease can cause 
several other conditions and that is my body i have 10 other conditions besides mitochondrial disease that affect almost every single system and my body. I have chronic fatigue syndrome, I have cyclic vomiting syndrome, hemoplegic migraines, complex regional pain syndrome, I have gastroparesis, gut dysmotility, I have, what else do I have? Sheesh. Oh, and I can't believe I just forgot two of the most important, one of two of the biggest conditions that I struggle with, which is dysautonomia and POTS. And I'm not going to go into all of those exactly um, just because there's not enough time in the world to go into all of that, but I do have a video that I made of all my chronic illnesses and I talked about them all and so if you want to go check that out, it will be linked either down below or up in the cards, one or the other, and you can go watch it and see what exactly I struggle with. And I'm really sorry if I'm confusing you guys, I'm trying my hardest, but when you know as much as I do, it's hard to kind of get it all into words. So there are other conditions that are caused by mito. There are also conditions which cause mito, and like I said, I'm not going to get into that because it is totally way, like, not even in the near subject of this video. But the symptoms mito patients have, or symptoms that medical patients have had that have led to the thought of mitochondrial disease or the diagnosis of mitochondrial disease. I thought I would read some of those symptoms and I know I did say that it causes other conditions but the symptoms I'm about to read to you still fall under mitochondrial disease. They might be a part of another condition caused by mito but they're all symptoms. So pretty much everything possible but I'm going to read a list because there are way too many to remember them all. So there are developmental delays which I had. You can have dementia, neuropsychiatric disturbances, weakness, I have in your nerves, neuropathic pain, in your muscles, weakness, cramping, and gastrointestinal problems. I'm just going to raise my hand for everyone I've dealt with. For your kidneys, renal tub tubular acidosis or wasting. Then in your heart, it can be cardiac conduction defects, which is, for example, heart blocks, cardiomyopathy, you can also have irritable bowel syndrome, which I have, diarrhea, constipation, pseudo obstruction, I believe that's how you pronounce it. You can have hypotonia, dysmotility, which I have got dysmotility. You can have hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. You can have liver failure, and in your ears and eyes, you can have visual loss and blindness, ptosis, hearing loss, optic, at optic atrophy, deafness, acquired strapis, retinous pigmentosa guys I'm so sorry some of these words are so big you can also have diabetes exocrine pancreatic failure you can have parathyroid parathyroid failure failure to gain weight fatigue unexplained vomiting short stature respiratory problems and the list goes on and on and on and like I said it affects every single part of your body every single organ every single system so for example my heart is affected my brain is affected my stomach and gut are majorly infected infected no affected my kidneys have been affected by mitochondrial disease but right now they're doing good but it is such a roller coaster of a disease because you never know what is next one day you are fine the next day you are in bed and you have all these symptoms that seems so random but you know they're connected all together and i take tons and tons of medicine i will put a picture on my basket of meds i have weekly iv infusions to keep my body stable i'm connected to right now unexpected access but yeah so sorry guys um i had to get up for something but like i was saying it is a very roller coaster condition not one day is the same and my video coming out well my videos coming out Thursday and Friday or a week in the life so you get to see the days where I have good days but also the days where I have really hard difficult days so in conclusion of this video mitochondrial disease is deadly and I forgot to mention that towards the beginning of the video but a lot of times it is unfortunately fatal and it's a progressive and degenerative condition, meaning you never get better over time, you only get worse. And I'm sure there are some patients who have had different experiences, but 
um, it's really difficult. There's no cure. And like I said, you get worse over time. And I have gotten worse over time. But you know what, guys? I am so glad I'm here. And I'm so glad I'm here to share this. But I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you have any questions down below, please comment them. Anything about Mido. You can also DM me any questions you have on Instagram. The link is in the description box. If you want to see more of my day-to-day -day life, I have so many, I have several videos of my day-to-day -day life with a chronic illness, and I also post on Instagram, and yeah, so I will put some links in the subscription box for more info on mitochondrial disease if you want to learn more about it and the symptoms and all of that stuff, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please share this, guys. Share this race awareness this week because it is so important so don't forget to like this video subscribe down below and don't forget to comment either and i will see you next time on my next video and now i'm going to go lay in bed for the rest of the night